It's been 10 years, an entire decade since the well beloved A6000 series line of cameras began and it all started with this. This is of course the legendary Sony A6000. And I think we can all agree that the A6000 is a brilliant plucky little camera but it is now 2024, this thing is now 10 years old. Is it still worth it? Well, I think I may have the answer to that question. Let's start at the top. The Sony A6000 was announced and released in early 2014, which does make me feel old because I think I was in my final year of school when this camera was released. I was actually about to sit my dreaded GCSE exams and I can still remember to this day the feeling of stress and anxiety going for that. And now I think back, I'm like, where has that time actually gone? And that actually brings up a really valid question. Where were you when this camera was released? Anyway, Straight out the gate when this camera was released, it quickly became very popular with both photo and video shooters alike. The camera design has stood up well to the test of time. With an all metal build, this camera feels durable, great in the hand, and the grip is nice and deep too, even if you have slightly bigger hands. The form factor is another big plus point, and it's something I personally love about Sony's APS-C line of cameras, and I think in all honesty, it's one of the reasons why they are so popular. I mean, this camera only weighs 344 grams, and that compact design makes it ideal as an everyday carry. For any beginner, the form factor is ideal because this camera doesn't exactly scream professional to the average chat, but between me and you, we know we can capture absolutely stunning professional photographs using it. I love it especially for street photography because it's so small and compact. It allows you to be a little bit more sneaky and enter that incognito mode. Now to prevent this camera from having a massive ego trip, I am going to have to knock it down a peg or two in the interest of fairness because there are four things that I don't particularly like about this camera. Let's start by talking about the LCD screen itself and we've actually got a few different points to talk about here. Firstly is the screen quality itself. Whilst the EVF is pretty good, the LCD screen is pretty poor. It's not the best you'll see on a camera but it gets the job done. Secondly to that, the LCD screen isn't fully rotatable like it is on the A6400. So if you want to shoot a self-portrait or maybe try and film a video of yourself, you're going to find it pretty difficult to monitor everything. And thirdly, there is no touchscreen on the A6000. Are these deal breakers? I wouldn't say so. More like nitpicks. We've got to remember, this camera is from 2014. However, the lack of any form of weather sealing on this camera is a big down point, and it's something a lot of people are going to have to be cautionate about when using this camera in extreme conditions. But rest assured, I have got an easy solution to combat this problem. What you want to do is pick up a disposable rain cover for your camera. That way, no matter the weather outside, you can continue shooting to your heart's content. I'll leave a link for that in the description below, along with everything else I'm mentioning in today's video, plus some APS-C lens recommendations, which will also be talking about a little bit later on in today's video. I guess the more major downside with the A6000 is the battery life. With this not having modern thermals, it chews through batteries like nobody's business. So I would definitely recommend picking up a spare one if you're planning on using it throughout a full day. Now onto the part of the video that I'm sure a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is the photography side of things. How is the A6000 when it comes to photography in 2024? Well, I am delighted to report that this is a little beast that packs one hell of a punch. Despite being 10 years old, Old, this thing still rivals newer and more expensive cameras and that's impressive. On the spec front, firstly you'll find a 24.3 megapixel APS-C sensor which is actually pretty similar to what you find in the A6400. 24 megapixels is plenty of resolution if you need to crop into your image or maybe you want to print some of your work too. On top of that it has a rapid 11 FPS burst shooting which is still really impressive. Listen to that. That is fast and it makes this camera ideal for capturing any kind of fast moving action, that be wildlife or sports. And the big one is the autofocus, even though it only has 179 focus points, which is probably considered low by 2024 standards, I mean the A6700 for example has a whopping 759 AF points. Nevertheless, the system in the A6000 will still deliver fast and reliable autofocus, and it still has a feature that holds up tremendously well even in 2024, and that is face focus and tracking. So as we all know, talking about specs on paper is one thing, but how do they actually deliver out in the real world? Well, to answer that, I took this camera recently down in London to shoot a couple of street POVs with it, which we'll be dropping on the channel in the next few weeks or so. So if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. The photography you are able to capture with this camera is truly remarkable. It has all the necessary tools to facilitate any photographer in allowing them to capture their best work. Around and about the streets of London, I was focused primarily 
heavily on street photography. But if you're looking at this camera for landscapes, cars, wildlife, sports, portraits, whatever it is, this camera will be able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it. And you know, I can also guarantee that you can use this camera for paid professional gigs. So as well as being an ideal first camera, you can also potentially start making money with it as well. I think the only area with photography where this camera starts to struggle with slightly is lower light performance. The ISO range is 100 to 25,600, but I notice when you start pushing past ISO 3200, you'll notice a lot more grain and noise in your images. Newer sensors are much better in lower light situations, but despite the limitations the A6000 may present on the surface, in practice, I was still able to take some absolutely cracking photos with this camera around the streets of London at night. Switching things up to the video side of things, and this is where I think some of the features and specs haven't aged as gracefully on the A6000. With video content being an all new higher popularity, it is really difficult to recommend this camera in 2024, as it only has the shooting capabilities to film 1080 up to 60 FPS, which I don't think is personally enough these days. On top of that, you have no picture profile, so you can't use HLG or S-Log and later colour grade your footage in post. You are most likely limited to the baked in look from this camera, unless you try playing around with using a flat pitch profile. Taking that all into account, I'd definitely say that this camera is better aimed towards photographers on a budget rather than videographers. Honestly, if you're watching this video through your phone, that phone can probably shoot higher resolution than this camera. I mean, the latest iPhone can shoot in the log mode, and I think that's also just a great testament to how far video specs and cameras have come along in the last 10 years. And it does actually make you think, where are we gonna be in another 10 years time? 8K, 240 FPS, internal, 422, 10-bit, memory card full in two minutes. <laughs> but something phones can't rival is the optical look we can achieve with a lens, and that brings us on real nicely to our next point, and that is lens selection. With this being the Sony email, you have a gigantic selection of lenses to choose from, and you're not just restricted with Sony lenses themselves. You have Tamron, Samyang, Zeiss, Viltrox, and Sigma, who all offer fantastic lenses for the email. Honestly, whenever someone asks me what ecosystem they should go into, I always recommend Sony over the likes of Nikon and Canon, and that's purely down to the lenses. Nikon and Canon are not well supported when it comes to third party lens manufacturers, and then lenses they do offer are their own, and they are ooh, so expensive, guaranteed to put you in crippling debt. The same does ring true for Sony lenses, but the difference is with the E-mount, you have the option of getting that same focal length for a fraction of the cost, but not a fraction of the quality. And ultimately, that's actually why I decided to go with Sony. I was with Nikon, I had their Z6, but their lenses were too expensive. Canon, I decided to avoid because I would have been in the same scenario, so I went with Sony because they had a well-established network of lenses that were in my budget. Now, speaking of lenses, if you need some quick-fire lens recommendations for Sony APS-C cameras, then I can easily recommend the Sigma 18-50 f2.8 as your all-round zoom lens. For your main prime lens, the 56 f1.4 or 30mm f1.4, both from Sigma, are great options. The Sigma 16mm f1.4 is a very popular choice if you want to do some vlogging or capture some real nice wide angle shots. And then finally, we have the 10 to 18 F2A, you guessed it, from Sigma, which is also amazing for vlogging and capturing super wide angled shots. That must have really sounded like I was endorsed by Sigma to recommend all those lenses, but I can promise and assure you I am not. I just think they make some of the best glass for the email. I actually think most of the lenses I own are from Sigma. So to answer the key question, who is this camera for? Well, I see this camera being ideal for someone who's just looking at getting started in photography, but they're on a bit of a tight budget. You could pick one of these up for yourself anywhere between the prices of £200 and £300 on the used market. I actually picked this one up myself for only £234. So to answer the question presented at the beginning of today's video, is the Sony A6000 still worth it in 2024? Absolutely. Whilst this camera does present some weaknesses that are mainly associated with the video side of things, if you want something that is lightweight, compact, and easy to carry around with you on a daily, then this is going to be perfect and tick all the right boxes. Especially when it comes to photography for a beginner. This is a camera that is going to teach you so much about the creative process of photography. It's really going to allow you to take your work to that next level, and it's just going to be a fantastic start to your creative journey. 
the A6000 is a brilliant camera. It has been for the last 10 years and I think it will be for the next. So what are your thoughts on the A6000? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, if you do want to see first-hand some photography from this camera with just a kit lens down in London, then definitely check out this top video right here. Or if you're looking at getting started in photography in 2024, but you just don't know where to begin and you want a bit of a tight budget, then definitely check out this bottom video right here. But with all that said, until next time, create, explore, and inspire.